Jack, thank you so much for joining us, dude. Thank you for having me, guys. Thank you very much. Um, Absolute pleasure. We can. So we've officially dropped our reaction. You haven't had a chance to see it because it, it will be no. live <laughs> by the time this goes up. But we can tell you now, uh, we're very impressed. The new track in the Fuck dark yeah, no. is sick. <laughs> thank yeah. you very much you guys yeah no uh, yeah as i was saying to you guys before we're we're big fans of you guys channel like we fucking love tuning in it's one of the favorite reacts we wait to drop so yeah i'm very very psyched to see when it pops up and yeah, oh, yeah. I'll, I'll be sure to let you know when you first too <laughs> <laughs> yeah. i was gonna say almost didn't recognize you <laughs> without you know, all, the, you know, all the makeup and stuff that we've got so accustomed to seeing you in there i mean yeah it's becoming a bit of a norm now isn't it it's mm. kind of like a rare appearance just in uh regular uh, human form <laughs> yeah i was wondering if you were going to actually actually come in full like costume full get up <laughs> <laughs> i could have i could have it would have been a much better uh, impression let's than this, let's guess, start yeah. on just that now because in the last in, into the dark again I, I talked about that a whole bunch about how i'm loving the the theatrical the sort of the costuming and everything you've really gone and dove head first into this like aesthetics for like the last ep and then obviously you've got something else coming with heaven here what was yes. the inspiration for that because i'm it's awesome no one else is doing it that well yeah 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 i don't know i was thinking about this today to be honest like it i think it stems a lot from i guess not not necessarily when I was growing up and listening to music, but obviously I was still a fan of like late nineties music culture and everything and seeing all like the heavier and alternative acts back then um, kind of do it, how they dressed and how they like carried themselves is just like, it's so sick. And that's what I loved seeing so much. And I think like it still happens in the music industry these days, but it's a lot more so in the pop side of um, everything. Like you see like Lil Nas X, like getting in insane get-ups, like at yeah. the award shows and like all the videos are just insane. And I don't know, it's just such a treat seeing the visual side of like music and like what the band's kind of picturing alongside their sound as opposed to like, I don't know, abandoned car park with a bunch yeah. of lights in the background. Like, I, I, I don't know. Not that no, there's anything no wrong with that. <laughs> no, not at all. That's it. You do you. That's it. Um, but I think, I don't know. It's, it's been a lot of fun, like diving into that side of things and like, yeah, just having fun with it again. Like it's been really nice just giving it that extra little bit of spice, I guess. So in terms of like the visuals, where where is all these ideas come from is there anything or any one any artist or any film or book or whatever anything specifically that's like that you've sort of thought oh this is something we can sort of lean into any inspiration specifically i think like in terms of the gothic and kind of i don't know there's a lot, a lot of leather going on basically with the main <laughs> gist of stuff and i think bramstein is like a massive like influence in that sort of like visual aspect like mm. yeah that's just a monstrosity band that's just pulling off like all these large scale like appearance and it's just insane i think that's definitely the foundation of everything but definitely drawing a lot from pop culture like i feel like every music video has had its own little different style going on like this one was inspired heavily by like black swan um yeah from, from fully like, yeah yeah crazy stuff and um then the nightclub clip was i don't know that was a bit of everything really like I don't know, like a bit of Fight Club in there, a bit of bloody, yeah, there's just a lot of influences coming in from a lot of pop culture, I think, for this. And yeah, we're still kind of to, trying to like push that very like, I don't know, gothic and um, latex imagery still. So it's nice combining other elements into that as well now with all yeah, the yeah. kind of Baroque and yeah, like a bit of a royal feel for all this Into the Dark stuff. It's cool. There's a really cool interview I saw with, do you know the band OK Go? They did like the, the treadmill video way back in the day. Yeah. Got, so that that's, band, that's the one, yeah. yeah, they were like the first like proper, proper viral music video. And I, I saw yeah. an interview with those guys and they were like, when we write our, our albums, we've always thought of it as being like a whole experience for our listeners. So when they yeah. write them, they go on a deep dive after this and watch OK Go film clips. They've got honestly some of the most creative, imaginative video clips for their songs and their songs by themselves are probably like oh they're fine and they're catchy kind of like indie rock but as an experience and they said that's what we visualize from the get-go is by doing that and i guess you guys are going along that path to a bit of having the whole experience for your listener slash uh that's audience that's it i i think that's a massive idea backed on the okay go stuff like just like diving into the whole 
whole experience itself because it's a lot more at the end of the day than like of course we're all here for the music and that's the main gist of it but I think just having that extra accompaniment is just so important and yeah it's nice to see that it's getting a look in again like you see yeah, oh yeah. like ourselves and Thornhill like really pushing that image and just getting some nice like extra details there that really carry across the message and the music itself well, I mean, like I've, I've, like I know I personally have always been drawn to bands that have that real strong imagery. You know, like one of the first bands I ever fell in love with that really got me into rock music was Kiss. You know, and then after that, like my parents got me into Alice Cooper, and then came like Manson, Zombie, Slipknot, Ramstein, all these bands, and and having kids myself, and it was a real good way of getting them into heavier music because they just connect with the visuals so deeply. And I, I think when people sort of turn around and say like bands like Slipknot and Kiss, even they said, oh, it's all a gimmick. It's not a, a gimmick to me. It just, it does just enhance the whole experience because you, you know, you're also going to get this experience live as well. Yeah. Yeah. That's exactly it, dude. And I think you're right about like the younger generation, like it's, and especially these days, like it's, it's going off site. Like there's yeah. so much mm. music out there and there's so much information online to absorb in just that 30 second doom scroll of your phone that's it course, keeping attention pop out, yeah that's it like you're going to want to kind of see something that catches your eye and i think that's the most important part of it all like just uh, it's, but yeah especially in these days because yeah the attention I, it's just like getting a lot smaller like yeah for sure think, yeah but yeah like as you said like all those iconic names like it's it's that for a reason like they just looked amazing and they've just kept that look and that style for years and yeah it still mm. works there seems to be a huge resurgence of music videos that have really come back in probably in the past two years mm. and the, the whole like reaction thing seems to be really helping that a fair bit because it's people are, are being more creative like we've spoken to artists before they're like yeah well maria from future palace brought that yeah, up fully. yeah fully she's like we we put more effort in this now because this is a new avenue for us to reach more people and so people who might not have found our band before but because we've done this music video that's a bit different and caught people's eye it's allowed us to reach new audiences and i think if you weren't trying to like make the most of that now you'd probably miss out on that opportunity 100 percent. yeah that's it i think like yeah and touching back on the whole react video stuff it just it's such a compliment to that side of the artist's vision as well because often it's just kind of a song reaction or so like that you'd yeah. expect but like yeah i think there was we did like that um that deluxe um a hyper days thing during covid and one of the singles that we launched actually no it might have just been the regular decay video from hyper days um it was like an isolation video and we pitched the whole pr campaign was pitching to react channels and oh, yeah. we just kind of like rolled it out like that and all the reacts popped up first and yeah it was really cool debuting it like that because yeah i don't know you just get the visuals get a chance they get a look in and it's really nice and especially when like you guys have such good production on like your stuff like you're really putting the effort to make it a nice it's kind of like a show like yeah it's kind of the goal yeah like official show it's sick and it's the yeah, same it's the same thing for us yeah it's the same thing yeah. for us like it's, it's with bands you know it's like it's not competition but it's like well we want to give people a reason to watch us and that you know selfishly is for our exposure and our growth as well but it's also because like no we fucking listen to good bands and we want you people to listen to these bands like yeah, so actually at the other day and listen to these bands we want to like we want to grow this as much as we can so that we can continue to share as much as we can because like the mm. whole purpose of starting this channel was to share the shit that we were talking about on text each day and now That's we've it, got yeah. opportunities to sit down and like talk with like sick people that we genuinely like like listening to and sharing yeah. and it's allowing yeah. the better production we can put into things the more people are going to come on board and find that and i think like having you come and take the time to talk like that's so cool because it allows people more of an exposure to like the behind the scenes stuff and understanding more of the music they love because things like mtv and like channel v and those are, they're not around anymore they don't have yeah, that no dude it's such a shame it's like yeah. this, is sad, this, right? get. this is where it would be probably i reckon you'd fully have on channel v if they're still going now you'd have like a music react like kind of yeah like, some you know, that format. segment yeah it would be so sick. We'll just keep growing this so until we do it. Yeah. <laughs> Man, that would be a really cool, like, kind of on demand, I don't know, like a streaming platform thing. Like, I don't know. This we're going to so continue. That, like, once, like, live music is happening for us more, we're going to take this and start doing, like, live in person. Like, we're coming to see you guys uh, 
on on the yeah. next tour, which would be cool. So we'll have to yeah. catch up and do like an in person chat then. Absolutely. Get the whole band in. Yeah, hundred percent down. Yeah, yeah, so. absolutely, man. So it's pretty wild to can like think that you guys have been a band since what was it like two thousand and fourteen? Is when yeah. the uh, what's it bones? What was Broken the bones, yeah. Broken bones, yeah, came out. That's so yeah, long ago now, dude. <laughs> it's insane, dude. And like, yeah, because we all started that band pretty much. I know I was finishing high school and the guys were kind of just out of there, but um, yeah, it's nuts. And I feel like it feels like COVID has just been going on for so long now. Just oh, kind of has. Yeah. Space. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I'll still count like those years because like we stay pretty productive with it, but like, yeah, it's nuts how that wiped out like a certain slab of life. It's, it's pretty depressing. <laughs> the people we've spoken well, to is. though, and I, I guess you guys are definitely in this, category more is it was productive for some people they couldn't oh, necessarily yeah. do the thing they were they were loving doing like you couldn't tour and you couldn't play your music live yeah. but clearly you were able to do something fucking cool with that time and you're productive because it's allowed you to bring out i think the strongest music in your catalog so far thank you thank you very much yeah you can definitely tell the people that it like kind of kicked up the ass and yeah when it all got taken away mm-hmm. they're just kind of like oh fuck like that was scary <laughs> and now yeah, it's coming sure. back and you're seeing people really reap the rewards of like just spending time on their art. And yeah, it's, it's really awesome to see all this resurgence of acts coming out of the other side, even stronger than before. Yeah. Even bands that were like, had sort of broken up or stopped doing stuff and now be like, well, fuck, like if no one can do it, maybe we can get back into it yeah. now. Like <laughs> it's cool. <laughs> and we're sure reaping the rewards of that. that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Finally to see like live bands that we never got to see or we missed opportunities. So yeah, for least. that's really exciting. <laughs> So when does touring start for you? So we've got another, we've got, we just got added to the um, full tilt in Brisbane that's coming up at the end of the month. And then after that, we'll kick off uh, May tour with Holding Absence and then pretty much jet over to the US straight after that for the August Burns Red and We Came As Romans tour. That's going to be so much fun. Yeah, I'm so hyped, dude. Like that, when we got pitched that lineup, that's like literally when we started this band, that's that's what dream lineup and yeah. It's, yeah it's crazy man like we're so stoked on that one and then yeah we had um got a few more internationals yet to be announced for the rest of the year but cool. yeah everything's looking really good honestly like i feel like lockdowns and stuff is kind of they're really working hard to make that not a thing anymore obviously and it's yeah. really just seeing live music again as you said it's just nuts like it's really putting it in perspective and yeah i can't wait for the rest of this year it's going to be so great seeing so many more shows was unify your first show back no we didn't do unify we did um the melbourne full oh yeah oh yeah you know you did full tilt didn't you yeah 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 yeah, sorry yeah um first show back was uh night and day festival the new year's eve one oh Oh, of course yeah fuck that was that was really fun because that was just like, yeah, I don't know, like to bring it back on New Year's Eve, kind of yeah. like, fuck off 2020, like, yeah, 2021. Jeez, I'm forgetting the years even. What a mess. Yeah, it's all just one year. <laughs> but yeah, it was just so sick. Just that was just the, le- the end note of that year. And ever since then, there was like a little blip, I guess, when um, restrictions came back and shows yeah. weren't allowed to go ahead. But it just felt good regardless. Like it was just so nice to finally get back on a stage, especially under with all your friends and all those sick bands, like celebrating Australian music, I guess has been the most important theme of post COVID world. And Mm. now we're seeing international starting to come back. It's, it's all looking really healthy. Are you Um, at all nervous about, sorry. Yeah. You're okay. Are you all at all nervous about traveling? Um, I think I was, but it's kind of just like, it's kind of just in the back of my mind now i think just yeah, okay. the excitement as well like we've seen a couple of friends already uh thornhill jetted off uh start of the week i think and they started yeah. the us run and i think it's just they're sort of settling in now and they seem to be doing just fine over there and i think as yeah. long as everyone's like doing their best to kind of like make it a, a safe situation and mm. i don't know I, I don't know if it's going to be like a you kind of hide around backstage as much as you can to kind of just avoid yeah yeah it'll be interesting to see how it's all treated when we go over there you kind of don't want to lose 
like you got to be safe but you also don't want to lose like the the fun camaraderie and connection yeah. experience of it as well because you want to hang out together and have a drink and party and that's, you know just that's exactly it even one of the best bits about like going over like when we did europe last time like just getting to work merch and just meeting all these fans that have been listening to music overseas that you've never had the chance to see like yeah i don't know if that's going to be a thing that you kind of miss out on but yeah it's it's all a bit of a adjustment period i think and everyone will kind of find their legs as they go for sure. And the, the whole discussion about like COVID with bands is a, is a weird one because I, I've like heard a lot of bands sort of realizing, oh, you know, like I can live without this, you know, like I can, I can go and get a career and I don't want to be on the road all the time. And it's changed, it's changed their outlook on how they will approach touring and all that sort of stuff. But then again, I see bands like yourselves and Thornhill who got to that point where you are really starting to hit your stride. Like, especially like from an Australian perspective, you guys, Thornhill Polaris, really starting to get out there and, and turn some heads. And then it's kind of just fucking taken from you. And it's just like, yeah, God damn it, man. I think that was where the hunger to work hard over COVID came from because we were just so close. Like we were just like on the edge of something really cool. And it's like we had a bunch of cool stuff that was just about to be announced. And then it just all gets, the rug gets pulled out from under you. Yeah. And I think just the, I think those that were really passionate about what they do just really kept chasing it. Like they just really mm. wanted it back and they'd do anything that they could. And yeah, I think it really shows the ones that really did do that at the end of the day. But yeah, it's just, yeah, it's what an, what an odd world it has been yeah. in the past few. Like it's, it's crazy to look back on now even. like <laughs> You would have never in a million years, like you hear all the stories of the shit that's happened in history and you never thought that you'd have one of those that people will be talking about in Fully. like 50 years time it's wild right yeah that's Crazy. i think i i do think about that a lot like what are you going to tell future generations about that part of your life it's just so whack like i was listening yeah. to a podcast that was talking about like world changing moments and it was talking about the pandemic being one of them and it was saying that how old are you now like 26 or 28 28 okay yeah. you're around my generation he's way too old um but <laughs> the, we're all part of this generation where you probably remember 9-11 sort of yeah. and yeah. how much that changed the world mm. terrorism became a thing and flights changed the way people travel changed all these experiences yeah. changed and they're saying that like our generation in particular has experienced these like massive world changing events whereas previous to that like 30 years there wasn't that much that changed worldwide yeah whereas like this current generation is just like man you can't expect anything anymore like just prepare to be have you you said the rug pulled out from underneath you consistently that's yeah that's it like no one would have been able to see the past decade like <laughs> landed it's it's fucking nuts man yeah i think you're right like it's super weird how that a couple of i don't know like the 30 to 40 years before all this has happened there was just not a lot of just big kind of world changing moments. Like you say, like there was, yeah, but like nothing, I guess, impacting like how. Like the whole world, yeah. like as yeah, that's collective. It. Or yeah. if there was, because of social media, it's like instantaneous for us. Whereas oh, yeah. maybe in the 80s, that's something the happens. Oh, like a week later, it's in the news because you read the newspaper and you got that piece of information. Where at the moment, something happens and my phone goes off while we're in the middle of talking and goes, holy fuck, this thing's just happened. Yeah. Like, yeah yeah that's a very good point actually i think social media has definitely got its uh a bit of a chokehold on how we see things too it's yeah definitely got its say <laughs> in, a, in a bad way but also in a really good way like yeah four years ago this wouldn't have happened so yeah. i'm being selfish here but like four years ago we that's wouldn't have had an opportunity to, to discuss and for you guys as a band social media and even COVID probably allowed you to reach new audiences because there was this new focus on a different media and a different way of consuming music, mm. even yeah, though it's not necessarily it. what it was. There's, there is opportunities there. And as we said before, you're like capitalizing on them and making the most of them and being proactive, which sure, is great. Yeah. You're adapting and enjoying it, which is sick. Yeah, that's it. So new tune. Yes. We've, got to, we've got to address the elephant in the room. God damn, it's yes. a fucking 180, isn't it? <laughs> it is a <laughs> Yeah, I think... Yeah, it's this whole, um, these little EPs that we're doing, I think each one is going to, like, your head's going to turn and by the, the last EP, I think you're going to have to do the full 360. Like, it's, yeah, we're taking oh, yeah. a couple of, yeah, we've been writing a lot of in, I guess, 
they were doing a bit of a change up in all things and it was nice it, honestly i see these eps as like a public test run like we're just dropping every style of music that we think this band could ever possibly be and i guess we're just seeing like what sticks and it's literally just throwing shit at a wall and and so far everything's letting sticking. the public watch yeah it's and that's what we were we were like oh surely like people won't like this or won't like this and it seems like everyone's like really into the lot so i guess it's going to be difficult to kind of like gauge the future from here but like yeah there's there's more like of this ep series to come and like it's all written it's all ready to go yeah, but, it's, yeah it's just it's going to be very interesting to see at the end of it like i guess where we've landed of the future of void of vision yeah. I mean, yeah, look, I I personally, and I said this in the reaction that you'll see, and it's no disrespect for bands to bands like you know Amity Affliction or any band that sort of keeps that same that same sort of sound. But I say no disrespect in three videos ago. You're like, fuck those guys. <laughs> like, <laughs> fine. Never. No, but I mean, like, if for me, like, you know, selfishly for my taste, it makes me so fucking happy to watch bands just do what you guys have done, what Thornhill done. Like my favorite band of all time is Thrice. And when they came out with like that oh, alchemy index and it was four EPs yeah. that were just completely different. And everyone's like, what the fuck is this? Like, this is wild. That's, and that's it, it, dude. That's it's honestly so a big cool. influence for this series. <laughs> nice. He doesn't like Thrice. No, no, no. Oh, really? me. I never listened to Thrice. It's not that I like him. Uh, I just like teasing Johnny. I have never really listened. <laughs> I, okay, good, you can good. wait on this. I, I feel like there was a big time in that. You were either brand new or you were thrice and i fell into the brand new way more emo area yeah and again yeah. i'm what, six years younger than you yeah i feel like I, I just missed thrice and i wasn't into as aggressive music at that stage because i was yeah. how old would i be when, um, when did that come out oh, when did no. artist in the ambulance come out oh, artist in the ambulance is like fucking what 15 years old now yeah, so I would have yeah. been literally like 16 and I wasn't, I was still in my little pop punk emo yeah. phase. I hadn't quite experienced that yet. So brand new is what I latched onto and I followed real hard. Yeah, I was a, I started, I funnily enough, I would have been a brand new fan before a, Thr a Thrice fan. I, I'm a real latecomer to the whole Thrice um, game, but <laughs> I remember it was like one of the first, I can't remember, it was like a double CD it was like in a red packaging with a big cross on the front. It was like thrice and oh God, I can't remember. And that was like one of the first CDs I bought, but I never listened to it. And then like 10 years later, I finally listened to it and I was just like, fuck, okay, here we go. Yeah. And then, yeah. I just was mad heavy into them from there. But yeah, I think you're right. There's like the, this, for what you did like brand new release, I guess. The, it would have been like Deja and Tend to and like Artists in the Ambulance were the sort of yeah they would have been similar and the okay. reason for them was because they were announced the support for Blink 182 and I was like well I need oh, to know who this band is yeah this is this is when I was like 14 they got announced oh, as man. the support for Blink imagine brand new Blink, Blink era this, this was this was, yeah, yeah the, the album for self title when they were like touring that yeah crazy that's, yeah oh that's dude really but they, they cancelled. The that's when Travis uh, Blake oh, couldn't fly. Yeah, I remember that. And then I didn't get to see Brand New at that stage, but I was already like fully in love with them. Yeah. But yeah. So but no, my point was just like I, I just love seeing artists just push themselves to just really dive in and try things. And it's not like just oh, we're just gonna test the water. It's like, no, nah, fuck it, here we go. We're gonna swan dive straight into this sound, which is what you've done on this new song. And yeah. like not blowing smoke up your ass, but you fucking nailed it. <laughs> Like it's, nah, blow, so blow some smoke. <laughs> it sounds fucking brilliant, man. Like it's so good. Your that vocals just yeah, blew me away. Yeah, let's talk talk not being incredibly vicious for once. <laughs> yeah, the melody. Right. It's, <laughs> it was super interesting. We um we had a very productive like writing week for this. We went away to a beach house and um we kind of just played around with a lot. And I think this song we always, I don't know, it always felt to me like this was going to be a really big song. And like, we've always played with the idea of me singing in tracks, but yeah, I popped in that first verse and it just kind of came really naturally. And then, yeah, we just kept, I, I eventually went heavier and stuff. And then we brought Dan from Architects into the fold, like to help with production. And oh, yeah, he just, he was just like, why aren't you singing more? And I was like, good point <laughs> and then sure. we went from there and yeah it turned into 
a really nice like result. Like I didn't see anything like that. Do you enjoy doing the clean vocals? Yeah, I really do. I I'll be interested to see how it goes live. Like how I feel about doing it live. I feel like, I don't know. It's always something that I've seen in the future, but it's, it's so far into void of vision now that it's just kind of like, yeah, it's not weird starting it now, but it's just like, yeah, it's just after screaming for so long to like 180, like this is, it's a crazy feeling, but yeah, I'm, you, I'm here for it. Um, yeah. Are you a confident clean singer? Have, have you done much before or did you sort of just try it or it's something you've always kind of? I'm not really, to be honest. Like I, I do bits and bobs live to kind of like back up James, but um, otherwise, yeah, I've never really like, done, I do it for fun, sure. But like, I've never really, yeah put effort into it before so now it's nice kind of to put that out there and kind of hone that craft even more because obviously yeah. I want to like start practicing it a lot more and like kind of developing myself in that field just just something else to throw to the board really because like the more you have in your arsenal like the stronger your assets are and yeah oh 100 percent, absolutely yeah. man the like, thing with it as well I don't think people could really look at this and and think it's being copping out or selling out or trying to appeal to a more mainstream audience because you're still as ferocious as ever in your heavies in that song the breakdown in that is still blistering and and it's so powerful so it's not as though you go like oh yeah like they wanted to do a slow song you still have all the elements that are your band it's just taking that extra little step forward i think is so exciting that's it i think that was another big one um dan mentioned this that that bit just comes across 10 times more ferocious like because yeah it's just mm. teasing with this sort of like beautiful scene for the whole song and then all of a sudden it just snaps and you're just like oh shit now we're fucking heavy like, oh yeah, they're gusta heavy yeah it's like oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> but it, like i mean a, an example that i like to use with this sort of stuff is like when parkway drive started doing you know their clean choruses and things like that people yeah. they've sold out and i'm like no no selling out would actually be just releasing horizons again because they know it would sell safe bet <laughs> yeah that's it. fucking terrifying do you, I, what was the first single off it was Aya that introduced that whole vice script yeah, yeah. the bon jovi did it again. Yeah. <laughs> skydiving just, yeah <laughs> i remember all the bon jovi comments and i'm like fuck they're not wrong but like at the same time fucking huge no, hey if bon jovi played, played more of that i'd listen to more bon jovi yeah Mate. <laughs> that would be a that's a look. <laughs> oh, I love that. <laughs> so next EP, hair metal void of vision then. Just like full blown spandex, teeth, <laughs> hair. We're missing the hair. That would be, yeah. that would be fun. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Need some of that hair to do that. <laughs> hair metal requires hair. Hairless metal might be a, a thing in the future, but yeah. Um, oh, it's all chest hair. There's that like 80s glorious Oh, yeah. Chest hair. Just you sit there just brushing oh. it. Just like... When you, um, so when you went to drop this song then, knowing that it was, it was going to be so different, was it daunting at all? Were you worried at all? Or you were just like, fuck it, this is us, this is what we want to do? pretty much fuck it this is us this is what we want to do like we were just so happy with this song and this next ep coming out that i think this is the first time we've truly just been like give a fuck what people think because we are so happy with this material like i think this this ep coming up is just so the most us we've ever been and it just felt really good like from the get-go writing and creating it and yeah i just made releasing it even more enjoyable and i don't think we've had we definitely like feel good about releasing music but never this good before like we're just really happy with where we are as creatives and as a band and yeah it's gonna be oh yeah nice to see. yeah yeah that's your, such uh, a good attitude, your record right? label i was speaking to them a few weeks ago when we first started talking about trying to keep uh, a call and they're like i think you're gonna really like this next song <laughs> which i was like that's, that's, that's cool cheeky. they've got your back but yeah they're yeah. like <laughs> they've been amazing the past few years like especially over covid like helping us out everywhere and they can and yeah I, yeah we love we love them. We, we think that they're yeah we're, we're so stoked with the ross they've got and i feel like the amount of effort and work they're putting into supporting the bands and and allowing that it's really cool to see that from record labels and like even with this like supporting the like the reactor yeah, space it's, a bit more it's it's something new and different but it's nice to see them going like, yeah, we're like let's explore this opportunity and see what's on there. Mm. Exactly, man. They're so on the pulse with all that sort of stuff that it's just, yeah. And it just works so well to everyone's favorite at the end of the day. Cause I feel know, like, go on, continue. Sorry. 
Yeah, sorry. They just like that's what they're about. Like the whole keeping up with like what's what's in and what's going. Like React are going off in the moment, and they'll be all over that. Like that's the whole thing. Yeah. Yeah, I just I just feel like the whole the community sense like of heavy music is coming back in a massive way, like it was in the early scene days. You know, where everyone's like, we're in this together. Let's build it. Let's get the music out there. Let's go to shows. Let's support. It just it's so good to see that just thriving so hard again. Absolutely. I'd love to see that whole street team kind of era come back. Oh, street nice teams. Holy the shit. Nice the posters. Street yeah, team. Yeah, bro. That Far was, that's out. what I, I'm really sad that I wasn't in a band to experience that side of things. And I guess Johnny was. Whole, oh, really? <laughs> fuck yeah. Dude, like, yeah, I don't know. Team. That's that's what I was, that's what I grew up with. And I was just like, fuck, this is so sick. I would love like to be in a band involved with this. And yeah. <laughs> that's the shit it might come back just in a new way it won't be like street teams it'll be like yeah. social teams social media teams <laughs> yeah, yeah. They're like, they'll be all tiktoking all over the place oh, and share it that way i will not be tiktoking yeah. you tiktok yeah. now you motherfucker no but i don't create like i'm not fucking dancing with a filter on for anyone <laughs> If you, I will show you a footage of him dancing yes, on this channel for TikTok. <laughs> oh, mate, trying to get away with that. Oh, man. It's okay. it's really, like, it's so weird how crucial, like, it's becoming to learn all these new platforms, too, and, like, mm. logging onto TikTok for the first time. And I don't know about you guys, but I'm looking at it, I'm just thinking, fuck, what do I do here? Like, Dude, right? I'm My job is mostly in social video. media. And yeah. I've only just stepped into TikTok because I like held off for so long. And then I was like, I was talking to my partner about it. And she, I was like, am I just being like old and shitty by not doing it? <laughs> like, should I just, and she's like, just do, do it. Like put, put, you create so much stuff because I do like the fitness stuff and then some fashion stuff. So I was like, I'll yeah. step my, and I'll dip my toe into it. And I was like, I fucking hate this. I hate <laughs> it, but I have to do it. It's like That's part of I mean, dude. It's so hard to just get accustomed to. I'm like, fuck, another one that I have to like keep up to date with. It's and there's like new rules, and it's yeah, I don't know. I want to grow that so we can start doing things like this sort of thing. Like I've been using your um, songs like over my workout videos and stuff because that's yeah, a cool yeah. way of me like getting stuff out there. Because I'm like, if I'm gonna share here. I'm gonna just like force everyone that follows me on every platform yeah, to listen to it. Listen, yeah, to that's it. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good crossover though. Because yeah, yeah. back here at the end of the day. Yeah. 100%. That's it. Uh, dude, we won't hold up more, more of your night, but we just want to say thank you again for taking the time to hang out, chat. Uh, we're so excited for everything yes. you guys have got coming up. Yeah, looking forward to a beer. Um, if you get a chance yes. in your busy schedule on the show night, when is that? That's in May. Absolutely. Is it May? May yeah, late May. Yeah. End of May. Yeah. I, yeah I, second, maybe? Second, yeah. Yeah. Something, something yeah. Maybe. I just get back in time for it. That's yes. why I was sick. I, that was my 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 fortieth birthday present for Jody. Was ah uh, very good. He gets to come see you guys, so Fuck yeah, Fuck should yeah. be fun. No, He's I'm, a good friend. I'm hyped. <laughs> That's good. I'm glad. <laughs> well, again, man, thanks so much. Like honestly, we absolutely love what you've been doing. The band is sounding better than ever. Um, and yeah, thanks for giving us your time, dude. It's been fucking fun. Thank you, mates. Yeah, it was good chat. Really looked like. Yeah, I'm very happy with this one. It's fucking great to see like you guys do anything, and yeah, it's it's awesome to like kind of I don't know bounce off each other like this, and yeah, I think here's to many more to come. come. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Fuck I did. We'll see you soon. Right. Thanks so much, Legend. Have a good night.